see this question find the mass m of the hanging block this is m dash sorry mass m dash of the hanging block this is your m dash in figure which will prevent the smaller block this is smaller block say this is m from slipping over the triangular block this is capital m and say this is theta so find the mass m dash of the hanging block which will prevent this mass this is smaller block m from slipping over the triangular block of say mass m all right we have to find m dash such that this block does not slip over the wedge the rectangular block do not slip over the wedge we have to find the mass m dash so that this smaller block should not slip over the wedge so first thing we have to do is i told you in the earlier example there are four we are solving every mechanical problem into four steps one we are first drawing free body diagram the second thing we do is we set up the coordinate axis and this coordinate axis should be set up in such a way that most of the forces should lie along the axis third thing we do is we write the equation write the Newton's third law sorry Newton's second law and then we have to solve the equation so these are the four steps that we follow here are the four steps that we are going to follow I love this so first thing we do is we will draw the free body diagram let me first draw all these uh, blocks and triangular block so they are so these are the three bodies so first of all let's show all the forces the first force that is quite obvious is weight here also as so the weights now you try to see what else this m does interact with m does interact with the rope the string so you have a tension for it now this mass m is going to interact with the wedge and wedge is going to constrain the motion of this block in this direction so we'll have a a reaction in direction opposite to the direction in which the motion of this block is constrained so n shows the interaction which the block is having with the triangular block and as a reaction since triangular block is applying n on this block block will apply a reaction force n on the triangular block so this is uh, it is interacting with the earth it is interacting with the blocks we have the two forces for that here hanging mass it is interacting with the string it is interacting with the earth so we have two forces now if I see the triangular block it is interacting with earth so you have mg it is interacting with the blocks so you have n it is interacting with the surface also it is interacting with this surface and this surface constrain the motion of the triangular block in downward direction so for that it will apply a reaction force let me show you the red pen you will have a reaction force R, right, and the block also interact with the string. So you have force T, tension T acting on the string, right. So these are the forces. For applying the forces, you must just you just see to what object it interact with. The triangular block interact with the block. So you have N. It interact with the surface. We have you have R. It interact with the earth. Everybody interact with the earth. That's why I have shown this weight in the beginning itself. In the entire the ropes, so you have a tension T. Similarly, this block kept on the wedge, interact with the wedge, so you have normal reaction N. It interacts with the earth, so you have Mg. This hanging mass interact with the rope, that is string. It interacts with the earth, so you have M dash Z. I should write M dash Z over here. Okay. So this, this is the free body diagram. This is the free body diagram. Now, uh, so we have uh, drawn all these free body diagrams. We have drawn all these free body diagrams. Now you just see, uh, you have to now choose a coordinate system. You have to choose the coordinate system. 
So what will acceleration? What will acceleration? Let's do the problem. Let's try to do the problem according to observer O1. O1 is a inertial observer. O1 is a inertial observer. Right. So what he is going to see? What acceleration he is going to observe? And this body? He will see this body say going down with A. He will see the wedge moving forward with A. And then since this block we have to find mass m dash such that this block is at rest with respect to wedge. So I will consider the acceleration of this block with respect to wedge to be zero. All right. So this mass will be inheriting all the motion of the wedge actually moving in this direction. So this block will be moving along with the wedge. This block will be moving along with the wedge. It won't be moving with respect to wedge. Yeah, it is. It should not slip over the triangle of it. But this mass is going to inherit all the motion of the wedge at least. This block won't be moving with respect to the wedge, but it will be moving along with the wedge. Whatever acceleration this wedge have, that acceleration will be inherited by this block. All right. So this block is going to, this block is going to move with acceleration A. This is going to move with acceleration A. And this is going to move forward with acceleration A. All right. Now, let's use the coordinate axis. We have drawn the free body diagram. Now let's use the coordinate axis. Let's choose the coordinate axis. I'll choose the coordinate axis with dotted line. Let's draw the coordinate axis. Say, this is your, or I'll take what boulder. You choose this coordinate axis. Say this is your x axis. This is your x axis. This can be y. Or I should take it like. So this can be coordinate axis. If I take this as x, y, out of two forces, one is lying along the axis. And acceleration, <coughs> oh, it's better if I choose, uh, uh, this is the axis. This is not correct. This will be the right one. See, if I check this as the axis, then out of two forces, one is lying along the axis, and acceleration lying along the axis. In this case, if I choose this as the x and y axis, then you see out of the four forces, three are lying along the axis, and uh, your acceleration also lying along the axis. If I take this as the axis, then you see all the forces are lying along the axis, and acceleration is also lying along the axis. This mg should be strictly downward, right? This is wrong. This mg should be in downward direction. Okay, that is fine. So this is mg. This should be your mg, right? Okay. So we have drawn the coordinate axis also. We have drawn the coordinate axis. Now the third thing we have to do is we have to write the equation. We have to write the Newton's second law, right? Here you have the acceleration in downward direction. So what's going to be the net force in downward direction? That is m dash g minus t equals to m dash a. All right. Here, so this is going to be theta. So this will be theta. So in this case, you have there is no acceleration y direction. So mg minus n cos theta should be equal to zero. And there is acceleration a towards right. So we have n sin theta equals to m into a. Here, there is no acceleration in y direction. So net force in y direction should cancel out. So r minus mg minus n cos theta is going to be zero. And you have net acceleration towards right. So in that case, t minus n sine theta should be equal to ma. So these are the forces. They are the, they are the Newton's second law, right?
to be applied Newton's second law and it's easy to find it from here you are getting n sin theta equal to ma and uh, n cos theta we can solve this now n cos theta equal to mg so if I divide it I get a equal to g tan theta and uh, we want uh, a basically so what I can do is I can call it 1 and I can call it 2 and then I can just add them so adding them will give me m dash g minus n sin theta equal to ma from here you get n also n is mg by cos theta so I'll put here m dash g mg by cos theta sin theta and a is going to be g tan theta alright so what we are going to get is we will get m dash uh, what should I write I want m dash basically alright I want m dash so m dash is going to be Oh, I committed some mistake over here. This will be m dash a. So you put here also m dash g tan theta. So now I'll get the equation. Okay. So this will give me m dash minus m dash tan theta and uh, m tan theta plus m tan theta so m dash is going to be m plus m tan theta and 1 minus tan theta so m plus m cot theta minus 1 so that should be the hanging mass this should be the hanging mass right mass of the hanging body so that these two blocks remain together the wedge and the block remain together the block will not be moving on this wedge if I take the mass m dash as this then this block won't be moving on the wedge so that should be the mass of hanging body right now the second thing what we are want, I want to make you understand is if suppose I take observer over here what he is going to observe? He is not going to observe any motion in the wedge. He is going to see the wedge to be at rest. So he is, he is going to see the wedge to be at rest. Wedge will be at rest. Wedge won't be moving. And since wedge is not moving, this block will also not be moving. Block and wedge, you will see, he is on the wedge, so he is not going to see the wedge. He is not going to see the wedge to be accelerating, right? No observer see <coughs> the acceleration of his frame. No observer see the acceleration of his frame. The acceleration which he will see in m dash is going to be a in downward direction, right? And he will see one more acceleration in m dash. Actually, this observer, he won't be seeing any acceleration in his frame. He won't be seeing any acceleration of his frame. No observer see any acceleration of his frame. Every observer think himself to be at rest. Every observer think his frame is at rest. Like we are born on this earth, we have never seen earth moving. We see earth at rest. Right. And so this observer also will never see his wedge to be moving. This observer won't see the block to be moving, but he will see everything like he will be seeing this pulley to be moving in this direction with acceleration A. He will see, if I keep anything over here, he will see this particle also moving in this direction. He will see even this block to be also moving with A. Apart from seeing this vertical acceleration, he will be seeing a horizontal acceleration also. And actually, the net acceleration which he is going to see is in this direction. Like A in downward direction and A towards left also. Right. So this is what the observer on the wedge is seeing. I call it O2. Let me call it O2. And let's see how we can do the problem correlating the observation made by O2. Let me write the equation. So if you want to correlate the observation made by O2, 
if you want to correlate the observation made by O2 in that case you have to modify your free body diagram and you have to add one more force you have to add one more force and that's called pseudo force and pseudo force lies in direction opposite to pseudo force lies in direction opposite to the direction of the acceleration of the frame of non s observer pseudo force will lie in direction opposite to the direction of acceleration of the frame of non s observer so the frame is moving towards right so you have to apply pseudo force in this direction like you will apply pseudo force over here that will be equal to product of mass of the body being seen by the observer that is m and acceleration of the frame of non s observer his frame is accelerating with a he is not seeing that but his frame is accelerating with a so we'll apply a pseudo force in direction opposite to the direction of the acceleration of his frame that is a ma and I'll apply one more pseudo force over here that is ma and I'll apply one more pseudo force over here so whichever body for whichever body you want to write for whichever body you want to write uh, the equation using the observation made by O2 you apply pseudo force in that so that will be I can write just here F pseudo that of course is M dash A that of course is M dash A all right so <coughs> let me write the equation I write the equation correlating the observation made by O2 with the forces using red right red pen so here you see the waste to be at rest which is in equilibrium so for equilibrium r minus mg minus n cos theta should be 0 and t minus n sin theta minus ma should be 0 this is equilibrium condition here your n sin theta is seeing the block to be also at rest n sin theta minus ma0 and n cos theta minus mg0 right here I write equation m dash z minus t is m dash a and uh, f pseudo equals to m dash a F pseudo is m dash a so you just see the equations see these equations you won't find any difference this equation this equation is same this equation this equation is same these two equations are exactly same and I have rubbed this equation but you find that this is the same as what we have written for O1 and what is this equation this equation is nothing but m dash a equals to m dash a so this equation is redundant it is redundant one is one we know it so this is not of any use this is of no use so these are redundant equations we get these equations you find that the equations you get is same equation you get is same for O1 and O2 but physics behind it is different I told you in last example also physics behind the equation is different physics behind the whole equation is going to be different the other equations the other equation and you get the same answer you'll get the same answer so you have an option you can write the equation correlating the observation made by O1 with the forces in that case you don't need to apply pseudo force you can write the equation same body by correlating the observation made by O2 with the forces in that case you have to do a small manipulation you have to apply one pseudo force right and by that you'll be able to write the equation the equation which you get is same the equation which you get is same right now uh, <coughs> so whichever body you want like if you want to write the equation of this body you just apply pseudo force and write it so it's not necessary that you write equation of all the body as per O1 it's not necessary that you write equation of all the body with respect to O2 right so these are some of the things these are it's your choice Whenever you write equation as per O1, don't apply pseudo force. When you write equation of any block with respect